how naive can I be and still breathe? I immediately knew that these people have caught me. And you want to enter a completely different country with fake husband. Mademoiselle, tu vas où? Vous allez où? You guys, I did not have any money. I think I'm too nice. Testing, testing. This is me without the mic. And then I plug it in. How do I do it? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I figured it out a little. So it's on. Is it working? I don't know. Can you hear me? Hi. Hi. Okay, let's keep testing this. Can you stay here? Close, close to my mouth. mouth. Can you still hear me? I am. Okay, let's go to the door. Can you hear me perfectly well? Okay. Is it better now? Is it still echoing? It's working, you guys. <laughs> I'm so happy. I was kindly gifted this mic, and I am so grateful and happy that it's working. I'm finally testing it out. Now the question is how do I clip it on? Should I? Okay. So I think I have settled on using this ruler. The torture neck that I am wearing right now will not do. So hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chupi Testimony or Demonias. And welcome. I haven't even written anything down in my book because the whole experience is still fresh in my brain <laughs> i hope you enjoy get comfortable and don't forget to like comment and subscribe let's get into the video i was set to leave enugu nigeria on the 28th of september which was last month the parking vlog is also up i packed a lot of stuff it exceeded the normal weight by just one kg though with ethiopian airlines if you book online or if you check in online you get five kg extra so that was good i don't know if it worked or just because my luggage was just one kg extra so it didn't really count i carried red oil because i am nigerian and i was planning on coming here to continue cooking my local nigerian dishes and like i said in my travel log the red oil was frozen i put it in on monday or sunday evening if i'm not mistaken it was so like completely solid by wednesday morning I brought it out from the freezer put it in a ziplock two ziplock bags just to prevent or to slow down the melting process now in the airport they said that if you are not traveling you shouldn't enter the airport i don't know why maybe because they've experienced something before or it's a new airport so they are still taking precautions i really don't understand why because i had so many luggages i needed help and my mother and sister were there my mom after asking them to please let her in with me they let her in we entered inside we went to weigh the bags first then after weighing it there was a line that you had to enter if you're going to be flying out enter into this line to go and you know check in and stuff and as i enter i look forward a little like people in front of me to know what you're doing and this man and woman bro they are such <laughs> like no man's business now nah, i need to show they open your luggage and if you i'm sure you saw how i packed my bags from the parking vlog so neatly arranged now they won't completely disarrange it and you know but they wear gloves they put their hand under all your clothes they check every corner they remove this remove that <laughs> jesus is lord my heart still beating 
man man the wicked run it when nobody is pursuing them i told my mom they are searching they are searching please take the oil i don't want to like calm down just go first it was the holy spirit and nobody else the woman wasn't smiling hi and she's searching your bags she was like my mom was like just if they remove it they won't i don't know take you to prison or something if they remove it they remove it and you're good she literally checked here 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 see where my granite or oh, my, my red oil is my sister did not search it wow <laughs> i was like glory to god and i went to stand in line for actual check-in this language assistant program is not very popular or not so when i tell people they don't really understand but the woman checking in did take a picture of my contract i don't know if it is to translate it after that we went to wait for immigrations immigrations came late but when they did come why am i jumping please while they were searching while that woman was searching my bag there was another woman by the side how far where are you going wow you will not come back or you'll be successful there or this one that will place us with something you guys i did not have any money i had only a few dollars that i would use at addis ababa when i landed just in case and maybe something that i might have need of when i finally land in france i had no naira me being way too honest i guess i was saying that i don't have it's only my mom that has they were like okay when you finish you can tell her now so that she will give us something i said okay at least for that woman i said okay then i go to the place where they check my passport i talked to the first woman she was like how the same thing where are you going she was like oh you settle us well i was like i don't really have any money she said oh don't worry you settle us their main madam was there and then she checked the passport for me and then she wanted to give it to me when i'm done with immigrations i have to go straight and go to the waiting room i don't know the names of all these places as i was standing at that place about to call my passport security came i said are you miss chuku I said yes when you finish you come to the back that security is calling you if my heart was beating fast it started beating faster i immediately knew that these people have caught me they've seen my head or they want to carry it or whatever let me collect my passport from the immigration she was like okay you're going somewhere I said, yes she said, okay go when you come back how naive can i be i still breathe <laughs> if it's andrew womack i actually left my passport with this woman and I, sh I should not have i should have taken it immediately hey we learn we live and we learn every day i left the passport with her i followed the security man and then she was like okay what is they caught you you carry the like, what did i tell them it's just i told him it's just red oil he said and he has such an innocent face it's the innocent ones you think are nice for them to not throw it or whatever you have to settle them immediately i was calling my mom and it was like mom security called me to the back they carried the red oil I was like what should i do she said if they cut you and they removed the way just bring it out and return it it's, I, I don't know i was i was the one that was too tensed up about the whole thing it's not a big deal you just open your bag remove the red oil and you go your own way that's it your bag goes it's not a big deal but i was so tensed up i said sir i don't have any money only my mom he was like hey, how much do you want to pay now my mom told me to tell him one k i told him sir one k he said it's not something that one k will say to you my mom said please collect a red oil so i followed the man i saw the big scanner that they were using to scan by a very big machine to be very honest as i was sitting there waiting this man that was beside me he was like he said to go home this thing now i've settled this thing why was he calling because he didn't expect that they were calling to the back of the airport he was carrying like four bottles of zubu i said why are you carrying zubu outside nigeria they were doing a lot of things they asked him to drink it the bubble machine I think literally the man was carrying drugs. But I think he was saying, yeah, bro, like our traditional medicine, something, just giving excuses. The boy machine, they were, they were um, measuring the drug content of what was in it. But like I said, in my travel vlog, I did not stay till the end, but that they are trying. People are actually trying. They finally opened my own bag. The male woman now looked and searched. She said, what is in this bag? Because I put it in the ziplock and I also used a cloth to wrap it. And it's just red oil. She said, okay. And she was like, but don't tell anybody that I allowed you. 
to carry it away. It's not allowed. Don't tell anybody. I said, okay, thank you so much, ma. And then it was time for me to go. It was like, give us something. I said, I said, I don't have money. I'm so sorry. Another woman that was there was also asking, I don't have money. So I don't have money. I think I'm too nice. Not to. I'm just realizing that it's because I'm so nice. Sorry. But it's because I'm. I don't know, maybe it was my first time. I was being too nice to them. I'm sure other people who have been traveling and know what they normally do would just bam give me money. I don't have money and just go and bump it and things like that. But I was like, sorry, being so. Anyways, <laughs> before going back to the immigration, I went and I saw the man that called me in the first place. He said, I'm going to now. You know, I was the one that told them to tell Madame not to do this one because he was lying. Throughout, he was lying. He was there looking at everything. And I was looking at the woman. She didn't go anywhere. He didn't tell anybody tell her to do anything. I told him, sir, I don't have money. My mom was already outside of the airport because I had already checked in and stuff. She was outside of the airport waiting just for me to take off or for me to finally pass and be waiting for... Um, be waiting. She was just waiting for me to finally finish all the checking in process. And then start waiting for the airplane before she left. So she was outside with my sister. I was like, okay, tell your mom to come inside. My mom was like, no, there are too many people at the door at this time. Like, so many people. And then she entered before to enter again just to give you money. I told him, sir, she can't come in again. And they've tried. There are so many people. She can't come in. Tell him to come and collect. Since it's an airport security, tell him to come and collect money. The man said, okay, where's my mom? I pointed to where they were. He said, okay. And he went okay immigrations please give me my passport they're like eh hey, the woman was eating so where are you going where are you from asking me unimportant unnecessary questions the woman now settle us i say ma i don't have money the woman now give it to me say i'm gonna let her go sometimes when you're angry you know and you don't let it out by beating somebody up by shouting back and it's just internal. I'm sure many of you understand. It just starts coming out from your eye. He went to the last place. So he was asking me, how much do you have? Did you have up to $10,000 or something million naira? If you do, you have to sign. I told him, no, no, I don't have it. He said, how much do you have? I told him, I don't have up to this amount of money. I was not like, but uh, how? who will carry, I don't know, 50 million naira in a bag to fly in the plane and go where you're I was, I was a bit shocked. Sure. Like, people do it okay. So I went and I sat down. He searched the bags again. We're still like, how for asking us? Asking people, they didn't ask me. But they were asking people for money. Some people were giving them money. Now, before I move on to the flight and Addis Ababa, tipping is not bad, you know. Wow, you you, you searched my bag, so while wow, you're doing your job, well, take five hundred and I take one. It's not bad. Even sometimes asking, it's not bad. Like ah, okay, how far you going? Ah, well done, Umba, no, okay, please now nah. you give. It's not bad. There's nothing wrong with it. But please. <laughs> Why am I talking as if I'm <laughs> talking to the people that work at the airport? <laughs> Honestly speaking, like, just look at me. You saw how I was dressed. You guys saw. It's not like, oh, they asked and they don't have one. They okay. Like, you're insisting that I give you money. I should settle you. Do I look like I'm swimming in money? Do I look like, oh, yes, my pockets are full of dollars and of cash to be given out? They should at least know who and who they are dressing. Like sometimes you know when you see a man, maybe an Igbo man or whoever, how he's there, you know that this man Ojukwego, he has money, or things like that. Not just any anybody, old, young, big, small, you're asking for money. You should sorry, I'm not talking to you guys, but they should know how they do it. And when you're asking for money, you ask, don't insist holding my passport for like two minutes because I should give him money. That whole experience, it wasn't nice. So, I boarded the flight. The flight, first flight was I think four to five hours. Five hours. And like I said, I slept two hours just before landing. The flight was not bad really. I loved the clouds. I loved everything. On the flight, I even met a girl that said she was going to Dubai. You know, I don't know when people are lying. I don't know if she was lying. And I see no reason why you should lie. Like, I didn't ask. I'm just trying to say I don't think she was lying. Because I didn't ask her, so what are you going to do? She's the one that started telling me. So I, 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 don't, I don't think she was lying about it. But she was like, she's going to Dubai. Her husband is there. I was like, oh, that's so nice. 
and then she was like since dubai i don't know stopped giving visas or whatever stop people from entering their country she's a bit scared but that's why because there was a guy staying beside her that's why her brother is with her to pose as her husband so she can enter because so they will not be using family visa <laughs> some people have mind <laughs> i was just carrying red a bottle of red oil and my heart was beating so fast and you want to enter a completely different country with fake husband <laughs> man some people have minds we got to the addis ababa airport she went to her own gate i went to my own gate from there we separated thankfully there was wi-fi i found my gate like i said a five hour layover and i spent the first two hours plus just sitting there it's like this one just get up and go and buy something to eat you're hungry but like i said i don't know what it was i rebuke it and i reject it but eventually i talked to some of my friends talked to my family and i got up and got that pizza i think the pizza was like 15 15 but it was delicious it was small but it was really nice you know while i was waiting and before going to buy there was another guy a francophone guy that came and i think he just asked me is this the waiting gate for this day? i said yes he said okay and so we just talked for like two seconds so i felt like them just be nice so after buying the pizza i shared my last piece with him bro that was that <laughs> why everybody like people around there the francophones are we are speaking to me asking me questions in french and i was just replying and i was like these people don't know that i'm not a french person but that was nice you know being able to communicate it was really nice then we started boarding second flight i don't know how i was feeling i don't really know how to explain it but i slept i was sitting in the middle seat that was my first time ever sitting in the middle seat flying alone i didn't really like it i thought they were just going to give snacks but they actually give full-on lunch and i said please i don't want anything to happen to my stomach <laughs> i just took water i didn't eat and i landed in the airport <laughs> immediately started you know going to immigrations <laughs> i wish i made the video but i didn't but the main thing is when you when you come down the escalator and you're going i was just following people in front of me so i saw i was walking walking i saw some people in a very long line here and then I walked, I flew there, we passed those people, those people were also entering somewhere. So I was in the line standing, you know, standing. I was looking. And I thought that some of them will enter somewhere. The machine will open, they will pass. Some of them will go and show their ticket to one officer somewhere and pass. But not all of them machines. So I was like, ah, this is immigration. Why are some people passing without showing their international passport and stuff like that? I was standing, standing. It wasn't it was almost my turn. I showed them my passport. I was like, no, this place is for French citizens, not you know, new people. I said, Oh, okay, sorry. He showed me where to go. I, I wish I could explain it. Now, many people are here. So I went like this. That's the line he told me to pass through. So when I went there, I stood in line. I was standing in one, a shorter line, a very short line. There were like six to seven people there. When I moved back a little, there was a sign there, fast track. Maybe these people paid for it or I don't know how they did it. My mom told me later that fast track is for people that um, rode with first class. Literally, I wanted to leave that place and go and join because the other line was long and it was just one person attending to all of them imagine i wasn't taking time sure so i wanted to leave there were two security people there two women they were like i mademoiselle and i was like i want to leave this fast track they said ah, won't you receive your blessing just like that and go back and stand on that line so that that is how it happened i received the blessing That's all the whole story you guys. I hope you enjoyed. Let's engage in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Bye.